we are in such a complex world that even no intervention, simply because of the past, just take the issue of global warming, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So leaving alone, to me, is not a solution. Changing the way we approach it must be uh, confronted, that there is no doubt. Business as usual is not the way to go, but uh, leaving Africa alone is no solution. If um, there is a change of understanding, and this is what my book is about, trying to make people understand that the situation in many respects that we have now in Africa, the challenges, the increasing poverty, the increasing malnutrition, the increasing number of uh, children being born stunted, they'll never recover throughout their life, can be reversed to some extent, not in one or two years, but over a 10 year period. But we need to be clear what we do. Our societies are so geared uh, to thinking women are not capable, they're weaker than men, uh, Africans are poor and ignorant. Um, uh, if you give a bit of uh, money, you're going to relieve your conscience and you're going to, to uh, help the world. Um, these people are coming to take our jobs. I'm sorry, you know, all of these are only very, very vaguely true. In fact, some are not true at all. Yes, there is poverty in Africa. Who has caused it? Uh, how can we challenge it? Yes, uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, of African children who don't have the right food, you know, the thousand days from inception to uh, about two and a half years of age type of thing. Uh, they, if you don't have the right food, your brain will never develop. But, you know, how do we cope with these things? We don't cope by continuing doing what we do. But in public, you cannot say the truth, you see. That's what annoys me. In my view, certain uh, agencies are doing fantastic work. But everybody does it in isolation. By not cooperating, they are ignoring the consequences of their own facts. Okay? And this is because we are in a world where we have moved away from basic needs um, and we have moved into a world of vested interests. So I don't know about you, but you know, I suspect that my grandparents were illiterate. I suspect, I don't know. You know, my father was a very uh, humble carpenter. I have got a superb education. I have moved away from the challenges of having food every day on my plate. I'm part of a system that makes it possible for me to buy my food from the shop. Now, that is two different worlds. Now, just let me give you back an example about the UN. The World Food Program gives food, okay? But it was not set up to help the poorest. It was set up to get rid of surplus American food. There is no doubt about that. But now, if we don't address issues like private property and above all, land rights, then we don't uh, address the fundamentals of agrarian revolution. No, governments are the same all over the world. They don't like uh, honesty. Food is going to become a legitimate weapon of war. And the more you control food supplies, the more whoever is in control power will have. And, and that's what's happening now.